is of considerable significance as the leaders who will guide this august organization for the next four years will be elected in the course of these proceedings. This is a critical task as we reflect on the admirable contributions that the TUC and its leadership have made in engendering industrial peace and harmony within our labor sector. The strong and constructive relationship that has existed between this government and the TUC is commendable. <clears throat> to all workers across the spectrum, I extend a heartfelt thanks and a especially to the outgoing Secretary General, Dr. Yao Ma, who, like me, has done his permissible two terms. He has been the best of partners, critical but constructive. And I count myself lucky that he has been my labor partner during my presidency. <laughs> Secretary General, thank you for your yeoman's work for the Ghanaian people and nation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, trade unions have always played a central role in the socioeconomic development of our nation. They have been at the forefront of advocating for workers' rights, ensuring fair wages, and helping to develop an environment where every Ghanaian can aspire to achieve their fullest potential. As we convene on the occasion of this 12th Quadrennial Delegates Congress, it is fitting that we acknowledge the achievements of the Trades Union Congress. Since its inception in 1945, the TUC has been instrumental in advocating for decent work practices, equitable wages, and safe working conditions for all workers. The con Congress has consistently influenced labor and national policies, facilitating dialogue among tripartite constituents on critical socioeconomic issues. Moreover, the TUC has been a formidable organization, persistently championing the interests of workers through frequent and meaningful engagements with government. Over the decades, it has served as a voice for workers across various sectors of our economy. The role of organized labor, especially during our struggle for freedom and independence from the British colonial power, is written in letters of gold. The historic call for positive action in 1950, made by Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana, would not have succeeded without the active support of the trades union movement. The likes of Pobi Baini, Vidal Quist, Anthony Wood, and the other workers' leaders have secured places in the pantheon of great Ghanaian nationalists through whose work and sacrifice we have inherited the free, independent Ghana we now inhabit. The Congress's contributions extend beyond capacity development, policy advocacy, education, and training. The TUC has played a pivotal role in the design and implementation of, very, of numerous national programs at various levels. Without question, government will continue to rely on the rich history, experience, and expertise of the TUC in the years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this Congress, sustaining and leveraging the power of trade unions in a challenging economic environment, is not only timely, it is also critical as we navigate the complexities of our current economic landscape. The global economy is in a state of flux, influenced by factors such as the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the consequences of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, 
geopolitical tensions, climate change, and technological advancements. These dynamics have had a profound impact on our national economy, affecting industries, businesses, and the livelihoods of our people. In such times, the power of trade unions should be sustained and leveraged to ensure that the interests of workers are protected and that we navigate collectively these turbulent waters. Trade unions should continue to be the voice of reason, advocating for policies that promote economic stability, job security, and social justice. The complexities of the global economy, coupled with the evolving nature of work, demand that governments and trade unions work together in harmony to improve the welfare and well-being of our citizenry. We must continue to nurture the social partnership that has been instrumental in addressing the difficulties we face and consolidating the gains we have made. Despite the global economic downturn, labor markets around the world have shown resilience. Here in Ghana, our focus on pursuing economic growth within a stable macroeconomic environment is achievable, but it requires the active participation of trade unions. We have come a long way, and we must draw on our history to inform the choices we make today. The policies and programs we implement should be transformative, ensuring that they cater to both the current generation and those yet to come. The opportunities before us are vast, and we must seize them to improve the quality of life for all Ghanaians. Over the past few months, Trade unions have demonstrated that it is possible to chart a path toward the future we all desire. The power of trade unions must not be seasonal. It must be a continuous force that shapes national discourse. This will add momentum to our efforts to address the challenges of development in a timely and effective manner. Ladies and gentlemen, sustaining and leveraging the power of trade unions has been key to ensuring a relatively peaceful and stable industrial climate over the past seven years. With the support of organized labor, the Akufuado government has resolved industrial disputes that threaten the peace and security of our nation. Our collaboration through the National Tripartite Committee, the Social Partnership Council, and the, Na the National Labor Conference has been fruitful. The National Labor Conference has served as the highest level of engagement among tripartite constituents on issues of national interest. It enabled us to ensure that during the turmoil and turbulence of the COVID-19 pandemic, no layoffs or retrenchments took place in the entire public sector. Not not a single worker was laid off. As a result of these discussions, government embarked on a holistic review of the single spine salary structure and the Labor Act 2003, Act 651, to meet the growing needs of workers. Through our combined efforts, public sector workers on the single spine salary structure received a 30% increase in their base pay for 2023, the highest adjustment since the policy's introduction in 2010. <laughs> Similarly, pensions on the SNED pensions payroll saw their monthly pensions indexed upwards by 25% in 2023, marking the highest pension indexation since the introduction of the contributory three-tier pension scheme in 2008. These significant adjustments demonstrate government's commitment to maintaining high income levels for both workers and pensioners alike. With support from the World Bank, government initiated the Ghana Jobs and Skills Project in 2020, aimed at enhancing skills development and job creation in the country. Under this project, the Ghana Labor Market Information System 
has been operationalized and labor administration has been strengthened. The Ghana Labor Market Information Service System serves as a web-based repository of labor market information, enabling stakeholders to make evidence-based decisions on job creation and employment. An ultra-modern four-story building, currently some 95% complete, is being constructed under the project, alongside the construction of 16 new public employment centers and the refreshment, the refurbishment of 40 others across the country. Government has also enhanced the mobility of labor officers by procuring 80 motorbikes, four SUVs, and 21 pickup vehicles for their use. The establishment of the Ghanaian European Center for Jobs, Migration and Development has further bolstered the provision of decent employment opportunities, particularly for young people seeking to migrate or return from abroad. The Youth Employment Agency has also been reformed and repositioned to facilitate job creation for our teaming youth. In 2024 alone, 84,138 beneficiaries were engaged under various modules of the program. Since 2017, a total of 700,947 youths have benefited from the YEA's initiatives. These achievements would not have been possible without the invaluable contributions of organized labor. The pension sector has also witnessed significant improvements. In 2017, the government resolved a long-standing issue with public sector workers regarding the temporary pension fund account held at the Bank of Ghana, transferring 3.1 billion CDs into the custodian accounts of the public sector occupational pension schemes. Active contributors to the SNET scheme have increased from 1.35 million in 2016 to 2 million as of April 2024. The National Pensions Regulatory Authority has expanded its zonal offices from two in 2016 to six, enhancing its visibility and in bringing pension services closer to the people. Coverage of pensions in the informal sector has increased from 91,253 in 2016 to 817,444 currently. Total assets under management have grown from 15.7 billion CDs in December 2016 to 71.6 billion CDs in March 2024, representing a significant increase of some 350%. The growth of pension fund assets serves as vital capital for investment, infrastructural development, and job creation. Government remains committed to expanding pension coverage, sustaining the pensions regime, and enhancing the adequacy of pension payouts. I'd like to extend special gratitude to the Sector Minister for Pensions, the Honorable Ignatius Bafuwewea, Member of Parliament for Sunyani West, for his hard work, diligence, and exemplary leadership in transforming the sector. Take note in particular of the improved performance of SNET, which recently announced a surplus of 230 million CDs on its operations. This should be reassuring to organized labor and perhaps bring into sharper relief the unnecessary controversy that was recently generated by SNET's efforts to offload non-performing assets in its hotel portfolio. It is my understanding that the transaction that was aborted represented the only occasion in recent history of SNET that external investors sought to invest in SNET's holdings. All of us need to be measured 
when it comes to making decisions and pronouncements that would affect the long-term interests of pensioners. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past seven years, government has consistently engaged in dialogue with trade unions to resolve industrial disputes amicably. This has fostered a stable industrial environment necessary for the implementation of government policies and programs, which in turn attract investment and boost economic growth. The preference for social dialogue over strike actions is commendable as it promotes peace, social cohesion, and mutual respect and trust. We must take advantage of this relationship and form stronger partnerships that enable trade unions to exercise their power for the benefit of all. Despite the challenges facing our nation, it is natural for trade unions to advocate for better conditions of service for their members. As a government, we ask only for moderation, taking into account global events and their impact on our local economies. Additionally, Trade unions should play a proactive role in shaping the future of work. The rise of automation, artificial intelligence, and the gig economy represents both opportunities and challenges. Unions should advocate for policies that ensure these technological advancements do not lead to job losses or increased inequality. Instead, they should push for initiatives that provide, that promote upskilling and reskilling, ensuring the workforce is prepared for the jobs of the future. Another critical area where trade unions can make a significant impact is in promoting gender equality and inclusion. <laughs> Women constitute a substantial portion of the workforce, yet they often face discrimination lower wages, and limited opportunities for advancement. Trade unions should champion the cause of gender equality, pushing for equal pay for equal work, anti-discrimination policies, and support for working mothers, including maternity leave and childcare facilities. And it is in this respect that I welcome the passage by Parliament recently of the Affirmative Action Act. Inclusion also means ensuring that marginalized groups such as persons with disabilities have equal opportunities in the workplace. Trade unions should advocate for inclusive hiring practices, reasonable accommodations, and policies that promote diversity and inclusion at all levels of employment. The rapid pace of technological advancement presents both opportunities and challenges for the labor market. While automation and artificial intelligence can lead to increased productivity and economic growth, they also have the potential to disrupt jobs and widen inequality. Trade unions should engage proactively with these technological changes. This involves advocating for policies that promote technological inclusivity, ensuring that workers have access to the training and skills needed to thrive in a digital economy. Additionally, unions should push for regulations that safeguard workers' rights. As president, I reaffirm my government's att attachment to supporting the labor movement and ensuring the protection of workers' rights. We recognize the indispensable role that trade unions play in our nation's development, and we are committed to creating an enabling environment for their operations. We'll continue to implement policies that promote decent work, fair wages, and social protection for all workers. My government is also dedicated to creating an inclusive labor market where every Ghanaian, regardless of their background, as the opportunity to contribute and benefit from our nation's growth. East Africa, we have a duty to partner with and support our security and intelligence agencies to prevent any threats to the peace we enjoy. We must work diligently to secure our borders 
and maintain peace and security during this critical period. I have been and will always be for peace. And I encourage all citizens and organizations to do the same by rejecting the threats of misinformation and disinformation. I will help ensure the conduct of free, fair, and credible, and transparent elections. It is the will of the Ghanaian people, freely expressed, and not the will of any candidate or political party, however desperate for power, that will prevail. The, the integrity of our electoral process is paramount, and we will take all necessary steps to secure it. The law against vigilantism will be strictly applied without fear or favor, ensuring that peace and order are maintained throughout the electoral period, enabling the Ghanaian people to make their choice free of intimidation and violence. As a beacon of democracy in Africa will be sustained and we will continue to set an example for other nations to follow. We must unite innovate, and act decisively to guarantee the interests of our workers and build a resilient economy. Trade unions have a proud history of, challenging, of championing workers' rights and driving social progress. As we look to the future, let us draw inspiration from this legacy and work together to create a brighter Ghana for all. And in so saying, I wish the new incoming executive of the Trade Union Congress the best of luck and success and full cooperation with hopefully the incoming Baumia administration. <laughs> May God bless the Trade Union Congress, organized labor and us all. And may God bless our homeland Ghana and make a great and strong. I thank you for your attention.